Coming of Age is coming up next. I'm your host, Josh Newby. Today, we'll discuss the many challenges that aging adults face and how they can remain socialized and engaged in the community. But first, we're chatting with our partner, Baptist Healthcare, about diabetes, what it is and how it can be treated. Stay with us. Coming of Age starts right now. As we age, staying active in life and involved in the community can become a challenge. But with Council on Aging of West Florida's range of home-based services, you remain healthy, independent, and engaged. From Meals on Wheels and Respite Care to Senior Dining Sites and The Retreat, you'll feel empowered to regain your freedom while retaining what makes you, you. We've been in the community for nearly 50 years, advocating for elders and supporting those who care for our parents and grandparents. We were there when your father's health began declining, when your mother needed companionship during the day. And guess what? We'll be there down the road when you need those services too. Now, join with us as we talk together about the aging issues that matter to you. Diabetes is a disease that affects glucose, or blood sugar, which is your body's source of energy. If left untreated, diabetes can cause serious health issues. In America, approximately 23 million people suffer with diabetes, and yet 7 million people don't even know they had it. Here to tell us more about diabetes and how it can be prevented is Patty King Warner with Baptist Healthcare. Patty, thank you for coming on today. Good morning, thank you. Uh, to get started, share with us about your education and your background at Baptist. I'm a nurse. I started off um, getting a degree in education at UWF in health and then went on to UAB School of Nursing in Birmingham. Got my nursing degree, um, came back to Pensacola, which I love and my home is here, and started working at um, West Florida Hospital. Okay. I started off as a spinal cord and head injury specialist and worked in an intensive care unit and I started teaching education on head and spinal cord prevention and then they asked me to help with diabetes and I fell in love with it. And I've been teaching diabetes for almost 30 years. So November is, is National Diabetes Awareness Month and obviously that's what our topic is today. And you hear the word diabetes so much and yet I feel like most people would sort of struggle to explain exactly what it is. So what is diabetes? So diabetes is a disease where your blood sugar is gonna be abnormally high. Okay. So normal is 70 to 100. So once patients' blood sugars start to go high and they stay high, the body just can't deal with the sugar in the bloodstream. And so it's an inability for the body to be able to get the sugar back down to normal. And there are several kinds of diabetes. Mm -hmm. What are those different types of diabetes? So most people develop type two diabetes. Okay. And type two diabetes is usually happen, it happens after the age of 40. Okay. Um, now we say 30 because people are very unhealthy, <laughs> Right. but it does usually happen in adults and it's genetic mm. and there's a problem with, you're making maybe a lot of insulin, but your body sugar stays high because the insulin doesn't work uh, good enough to bring it back down. Okay. And then there's type one diabetes, which is more rare, but when you have type one diabetes, this is also very genetic at times, but it is an insulin deficiency. There's an immune response that seems to want to attack the beta cells in the pancreas, mm -hmm. and that's where insulin is made. And then these patients have no um, idea, maybe, that they have it, right. but it'll happen younger, between the ages of mostly two and 30. It can happen in your 50s, okay. but you will be insulin dependent. Your sugar will get elevated to a point where you don't have enough insulin and you will be on insulin the rest of your life. Okay. Now you mentioned uh, genetics, but you also mentioned a healthy lifestyle. So I'm curious, what, what causes diabetes? So beyond the genetics, um, diabetes, type two diabetes, which is what most of us have, mm -hmm. um, happens because as we age, we have a tendency to stop working out. We don't exercise as much. Right. We are working, we're stressed out. Sure. We don't exercise. We start eating a lot of junk food <laughs> and sugar, and the world's addicted to carbohydrates, right. and those are our sugars. And so people have a tendency to gain a lot of weight, and when you gain midline obesity in the belly, uh -huh. and you're growing older, yeah. there's your biggest chance of developing type 2 diabetes. So is that is it hereditary? Does that play a part in it? It does 
play a part in it. Okay. Um, like my family has diabetes, mm -hmm. and we're not that big. Right. But it still has type two diabetes. Most of my uncles and aunts developed it, and my mother after the age of 50, 60. And it's because in some instances it's weight gain, in other instances mm. it's just hereditary. Okay. Are, are there specific populations or demographics that are maybe more prone or, or less prone to diabetes? There are, um, there are. So statistically, all Indians or um, Pacific, in, in, all Indians, uh -huh. whether you're from the Pacific Islands or you're an American Indian okay. or you're an Indian um, from the Middle East, Indian people have a tendency to eat a lot of starches okay. and a lot of fruits. <clears throat> and if you gain weight, it becomes an issue of type 2 diabetes. Now, other than that, in my field, 30 years in Pensacola area in the South, all races, all people, I have as many, you, you, you can have as many white people as African-American and you can have Asian patients. It really is a lifestyle situation. Okay. So I, I, I mentioned earlier, and this statistic was surprising to me, 23 million Americans have been diagnosed. Uh, 7 million have the disease but don't even know it. So, I, I mean, what are the symptoms? What are the signs that someone may have diabetes? So when you, your sugar level starts to get really high, the body hates high glucose. Okay. Because the, it's like having a glass of juice and putting tablespoons of sugar in it over and over and over till it becomes syrup. Right. So now your blood's <laughs> like syrup. So what happens is the body says, I'm gonna do something about this. And the signs and symptoms are simply that you start peeing and drinking and peeing mm, and drinking. Okay. Now beyond that, you might have really blurry vision because the, the sugar will also start to deposit behind the lens of the eyes. Okay. And then you might also, um, you're gonna be thirsty, you're gonna be urinating, you're gonna have this um, headaches. You also might end up having um, an infection or a wound that will not heal because when your sugar levels are high, it's very difficult to heal. Right. And so a lot of people who ignore the, the pee and the drink and the tired and you get extremely fatigued. Okay. So if people ignore that, they say, well, this is my life. Right. I have a hard life right now. But usually, if you, even if you ignore the symptoms of urinating, thirst, extreme fatigue and mm -hmm. vision problems, you'll end up in an ER or okay. a urgent care with constant sickness or infections. Which leads me to uh, how is it treated? Mm -hmm. And uh, does everyone need insulin in order to combat um, diabetes? Well, when you have type two diabetes, the goal is to get you to eat healthier. If we right. catch you early and your sugar is not that high, meaning 150, 200, then we, we can always say, look, let's try to exercise, right. let's eat healthier. So we teach them how to eat healthier meals. And then we might put them on a pill. Okay. But if that doesn't work, well, then we start to add more medications. Um, there are also injectable medications. Okay. Now, when you have type two, if it goes on and your sugars stay over two and 300, eventually you'll need insulin. Okay. Because your body is trying so hard to get the sugar down, it starts to run out of insulin. Gotcha. But it could be just diet, healthier eating, um, exercise and medications. Sure. We have just a few seconds left, but I mm. wanted to make sure I ask you, uh, are there any ways to prevent or at least help mitigate the chances of diabetes? Okay. Well, I think that everybody should learn how to eat a healthier diet. Everybody's on a lot of radical diets. And really, carbohydrates are good for you because they give you energy. Right. So what everybody needs to do is learn how to eat modified carbohydrates, exercise at least five days out of the week if they can, and then see a doctor okay. every year. Excellent. Great information. I appreciate you sharing it with us. Thank you. Up next, we'll talk about senior adult programming specifically for those with developmental disabilities. Stay with us. Why do people love ACT's retirement life communities? There are more reasons than just the active lifestyle. Like ACT's Life Care, a plan that protects your nest egg with predictable monthly fees, even if your health care needs increase. So you can enjoy a carefree today and a worry-free tomorrow. Plan a visit and see why our satisfaction rating with current residents stands at 98%. Act Retirement Life Communities, where loving kindness lives. What does it look like when a life is truly changed? I feel a sense of accomplishment because I built a house. This house has brought us financial independence. It's a great place to raise a family. <laughs> Strength. 
fuerza. When I look back where we've come from to where we are today, it makes my heart very happy. Potential. Potencia. For me, this house means all of us together. <laughs> Sorry. Did I get up? <laughs> Security. Security. Every family dreams to have their own house. This house changed our lives. Habitat for Humanity is at work in your community and around the world. Through Shelter, we empower. Finding ways to socialize and remain engaged as we age is tough enough, but it can be doubly so for those with developmental or cognitive disabilities. Luckily, there are programs in the area that help individuals such as those. Here with me today is Missy Rogers with Art Gateway. Missy, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. Um, so I know what Art Gateway is. Okay. You, of course, know what Art Gateway yes. is. But for those who don't know, sort of give us a 30,000 foot up view. What is Art Gateway? Sure. So the Art Gateway provides services to people with developmental and intellectual disabilities. Um, in both Escambia and Santa Rosa counties. Last year in 2018, we served right at 1,000 people, children oh. and adults, in our various services. Um, so an intellectual or developmental disability might be something like Down syndrome, mm -hmm. cerebral palsy, autism, um, intellectual disabilities defined by your IQ, so low IQ, um, all sorts of, of various d developmental type of issues and disabilities. Okay. Now, uh, when, when I think of Art Gateway, and I'm sure when a lot of people think of Art Gateway, they usually think of children mm -hmm. and, and youth with, with developmental challenges. Um, but you also have a fairly robust senior program we there do. as well. Tell us about that. We do. So you're right. We serve quite a, quite a few children um, in our services, but our adults also take up about a third of the services okay. that we provide. Um, specifically for our senior adults, what we're finding is that people with developmental disabilities are living longer lives. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of decades ago, someone, for example, with Down syndrome might have a life expectancy of maybe 40 years old. Oh, now they're living well into their 60s and 70s, right. um, regardless of their disability. And so we've had to evolve the services that we provide um, to be able to serve this population as well. So um, the Art Gateway has a senior adult program. Right. We have um, individuals that are usually 55 or older okay. who are choosing to no longer work in the community, whatever work is defined right. for that person. Um, and so, yeah, we have a, a very nice program that where they can relax and be safe during their day. Take us through a typical day in that program. And, and I'm thinking specifically of someone who, you know, is a caregiver, is bringing their loved one maybe for the first time, is a little apprehensive. What, what can their loved one expect? Sure. So typically a day is going to be about six hours. Okay. So you're dropped off at the program. Um, again, whatever that means to you, it could be a family member, it could be public transportation. Um, you're dropped off at the program. Once everyone gets there, usually around eight o'clock, then we have what we call reality orientation. We get everybody together, make sure that we know what day it is, what mm. the weather is like, that sort of thing. It's just engaging their mind sure. to get their day started. Then the rest of the six hours is uh, typical activities might include arts and crafts. We do a lot of physical activity, mm. um, chair aerobics. Richard Simmons is the favorite <laughs> around our place. Um, but things of that nature, just, um, you know, we do a lot of skills training. It might be safety training or a um, lot of socialization activities mm -hmm. just to keep them engaged and, and active, um, especially with their minds. Definitely. We do see some dementia or pre-dementia um, tendencies for some of our individuals, and so we try to keep them their mind going as long as possible. I'm glad you mentioned that because, uh, and we, we sometimes have this misconception with some of our senior centers as well, People think senior center, you know, what they've seen on TV or something. It's it's a very gray, drab area. People are just sitting in the corner, slouched over. But it's not that at all. I mean, you're engaging them. You're 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 wearing them out Absolutely. to a certain extent. <laughs> Absolutely. And we actually have two separate programs. Okay. So, um, if someone is maybe a little bit older or is of that pre dementia, um, you know, they're going to be in a, a little bit calmer of one of, of our settings. But our other setting um, has been housed at Bayview Center for many, many, many years. Of course, we're displaced right now right. while they're renovating. 
Um, but we are engaged with the senior community regardless of ability or disability um, over at that center and we are we are going strong over there good. so it's a fun time good so in order to participate in the senior program um, do, does the individual have to be registered as a client is there an onboarding process to take us through that sure many of most of our clients in the senior program are also clients of the State of Florida Agency for Persons with Disabilities. Okay. They're on the Medicaid waiver mm -hmm. and they receive state funding to participate in the program. That's what pays us to do, right. um, the, to provide that service. Okay. Um, so yes, they do need to be registered with that and most of them already are. And a lot of them have been in one of our programs previously and then have just changed from a work program to the senior adult program. Okay. Now, we get this question a lot too mm -hmm. in, in terms of dementia. Um, what are some signs, what, what are some inclinations that someone may have an intellectual or developmental disability and may be right for your program as opposed to just sort of the normal signs of aging? Right. Um, now, a developmental disability would have been diagnosed prior to the age of 18. Okay. So that's the biggest factor. Somebody who has a developmental disability, though, and that is also showing signs of dementia, might be confused. Mm. They might become incontinent, sure. um, you know, before they should be. Right. Um, they might start falling. It's the typical, the typical senior um, issues that that we see. What again, regardless of disability, the onset is usually a little bit sooner for mm. some of our um, individuals. Okay. Um, but that's the, probably the biggest difference. Gotcha. Uh, so, is is there a need for volunteers? I'm sure you have a lot of people who want to want to yes. engage with these people. Always, we love our volunteers. <laughs> um, we currently have a multitude of volunteers. Um, the Senior Follies is a huge supporter of yes. ours. Council on Aging, <laughs> of course, provides our volunteers mm -hmm. through the um, the Senior Program. Um, we have Canines for Christ. We have Pet Therapy, the Pilot Club. We have so many people that come in on a regular basis. They love to engage with the community. So having individuals come in, whatever your expertise is, it could be it could be just putting a video on and, and doing Richard Simmons with us. It could be playing the piano and engaging them in, in song and dance for a, you know 30 minutes or so. Um, we have a, an individual who brings a, a pet therapy dog in and they love just oh, yeah. spending time with that dog. Oh, so yeah. it's little things like that. Whatever your expertise is, we can put it to good use. And that engages them in, in socially in a different manner awesome. with different people. And if someone is interested in volunteering, uh, how do they get involved? And is there like, a, like an orientation and background check process? Yes. So um, just contact our main office okay. and um, we'll give you, there's a volunteer packet that you would have to fill out. Anything more than 10 hours a month will require a background check. Okay. If you do less than that, then we don't. Um, and we'll work with you to make sure that those costs are covered in okay. some way, shape, or form. Gotcha. And I'm curious, are, are the senior adults um, that, that you serve eligible for some of the other services that are offered at your facility? We have just a couple seconds left, but I wanted you to go over Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, because of their eligibility for the program, everything is tailor-made and individualized for them. Okay. So they can tell us what they want to do. And if they want to participate in a different work program, they're, it's totally up to them. That's awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you so Thank much, you. Missy. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. There's no such thing as a free lunch, unless, of course, you come to one of our senior dining sites. Stay tuned. Since 1989, TLC Caregivers has been providing the special help people need to stay independent in their own homes. TLC is an employer of choice in the home care market. Our employees are screened with level two background screens, drug free and have caregiving experience. If you have time, enjoy people, and are interested in joining us, go to tlccaregivers.com to learn more about becoming a TLC caregiver, or visit us in Cordova Square. When cancer tries to take you away from the things that matter most, Baptist Cancer Institute offers caring physicians and the most innovative treatment options. With convenient locations and a wide array of support programs and services, we're here to help you during the most difficult of times. As a member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network, we're bringing even more innovative cancer care to our community right here at home. When you need cancer care, we'll be there. One of Council on Aging's least known yet valuable programs is our senior dining sites. 19 loca locations across Escambia and Santa Rosa counties that offer socialization, exercise, and of course, 
lunch. But why should you get involved? And more importantly, how do you get involved? Let's chat with our Community Services Director, Craig Shoemaker, to learn out more. Craig, thank you for coming on today. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me this morning. So what is a senior dining site? A senior dining site is basically a neighborhood um, site that we choose within the community that um, people who are around the neighborhood can come in and sit down, enjoy camaraderie with their local neighbors that they normally wouldn't see if they just stayed home all day long. So it's a great place to come for a hot meal once a week. Or actually, not. excuse me, not once a week. Five days a week. Five days a week. Five Monday days through a week. Friday, most Monday of them. Monday through are open. Friday. You know, there's a few that are not open on Fridays, but for the most part, it's, it's five days a week. Definitely. It's, it's mm -hmm. a great asset. So, we're trying to boost participation at some of our more rural sites. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, the sites located in, in, in the city, they're, they're pretty well attended, honestly. Very well attended. But yes. uh, you get north of I 10, that participation tends to drop off. Of course, those areas are more rural. Mm -hmm. uh, what are those sites? Um, the sites that we have participation where it's low, um, our farthest one out there would be J yeah. up there in Santa Rosa County. Um, it's a nice site. Um, it's a quiet site up there. Um, our other one that's up there is Chamukla, mm -hmm. um, also in Santa Rosa County. Um, that's a quiet, an older site. It's been there for a long time. Um, the ones that we have in Escambia County or Century. Yep. Um, off of Industrial Boulevard and 29 up there. And then we have Contonement up near the um, International Paper site. And then our Beulah site over there near Tate High School. And all of them are, they're, they're rural, yes, but they're also very welcoming and mm -hmm. everybody's very open. Like our Chamukla site, there's somebody who brings in um, canned vegetables all the time and she can't, does her own canning. And oh, wow. So I'm like, I want to be a part of that. But yeah, I exactly. Made it you that have far. a job, though. Craig. I have a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, not canning, but you know, partaking yeah. and tasting them for sure. Because I think when people when people live in, in the more rural parts of our mm -hmm. county, they're sort of, you know, there's there's some distance between them and, and the rest of society. Correct. They think, you know, what is available to me? Mm -hmm. Well, these sites are available to right. them. And right. so, so why would someone living in Shemukla say, want to participate in, in one of our sites? One of the best things for them to, is to get out of their homes, right. to be able to do something different. Um, as people age, people tend to uh, step back from society, right. basically. But with our dining sites, especially with like Chamukla, Chamukla is a, a very active site. Mm -hmm. People come in, there's a couple up there that actually do dancing and teach everybody yeah, dancing. Yeah. And it's really cool to sit there and watch them do all this uh, wonderful stuff for them. But for the most part, um, why would they want to do it? It's it's just change of pace. Get you out of the yeah. house. Meet people. You know, see your neighbors that you normally wouldn't see on a daily basis. Right. And so they do come from a distance. Some do come like, like close by. Some can walk, mm. um, depending upon where they are. Um, but for the most part, everybody drives in, or we can. You know, two of our sites we pick them up for Contoma and Beulah. Um, and they, they come, they get there about nine o'clock in the morning, they're there for three hours. I mean, yeah. That's three hours they're doing something, not sitting home stagnant. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, let's say it's my first time at one of these sites, right? Mm -hmm. I've never been, um, mm -hmm. a little intimidated probably, you know, mm -hmm. you will go a little uncomfortable walking into a, a room of people you mm -hmm. don't know perhaps. Mm -hmm. What can I expect? What's a typical day look like? A typical day, um, we open up our doors typically about nine o'clock in the morning. Um, our site managers will make a pot of coffee or have iced tea out there and people will come in. Some will bring in the newspaper, some will share the newspaper. But in most of the sites we have jigsaw puzzles out on the uh, perimeter tables and people sit down and they, they just pick up a piece, they see yeah. a piece and the next you know they're talking. Yeah. And normally people will come in and, and I've been in situations um, coming into a new place where you just kind of like you know, uh, yeah. what do I do? And then I just, you know, naturally go in and just partake in what they're doing. Um, when I first visited the sites, it was the same thing, but most people will, will come in, but there's always activities. We have a monthly activities calendar that's put out online and at each of the sites. And some of the bigger popular things that we do are bingo. And mm. I've seen- Don't mess with bingo. Bingo <laughs> is, is a big thing. And yeah. the bingo, uh, they, they were just doing it yesterday morning up in Contentment when I was there. And there was probably about 16 people up there. But then I've been at our, one of our city sites where there's 80 people yeah. at our Cobb Center. And yeah. it's like, oh gosh. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm. but you know, they win prizes. Oh, and, yeah. and most of it's household goods that you know we need that we need just to clean our house or wipe our counters, whatever. But it's one of our more popular things. And then some of our sites, they do Tai Chi. Oh yeah. 
Our Baghdad location, we have Tai Chi. It's very popular. There's about 40 people that show up just to do their you know, exercises. But at the same time, um, everybody's welcome. Our site managers are very accommodating, very uh, positive energy. There's a good vibe there when you yeah. walk in. And everybody's engaged. And oh, everybody's yeah. never, nobody has ever felt not to be welcome. There. Yeah. Everybody's welcome. Well, like I was chatting with our previous guest, Missy, uh, there's, you know, if you watch TV or movies, there's this sort of misconception that a senior center is going to be sort of drab and people are just going to be sitting in the corner, right? And you might as well sit at home if you're going to do that. But mm -hmm. these are, I mean, these are some lively sides. Mm -hmm. they, they, get, they get a little rowdy. They do get rowdy, you know, and even when we have um, craft day, um, with the holidays coming up, our activities um, supervisor, Margaret, will come in there and she'll do these like decoupage and things of that nature. And these people get involved. Oh, and yeah. in fact, the day I was up there at one of our, our Beulah site, I was actually doing it with them. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> they roped you in. You know, I was like, oh, come on, Mr. Craig, come <laughs> on, come on. And I don't, I don't mind doing that. Um, but they're not dreary, they're bright, they're light. Yeah. Um, they have, you know, pictures on the walls. There's, there's uh, tables are nicely decorated. Um, and it's a deal, and they're in sites like, you know, community centers or in some churches, and they're very vi you know, yeah. vibrant for us yeah, yeah, to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time. Mm -hmm. So the most important part of the day is, of course, the lunch. Lunch. So tell us about the lunch, and is it actually free? The lunches are, yes, they are free. Um, and what uh, people do is they would have to call us if they've never been to one of our sites to call our office the day before, before noon, and say, hey, I want to come to your um, site, say, at Gall Point or um, in Beulah, and we'll put your name on the list. And so when they come in, they'll have a, a, a lunch ready for them. It's five days of hot meals daily. It's a recommended daily allowance for mm -hmm. seniors. Um, our most popular lunch is hamburgers. Of course. And yesterday was hamburgers. And everybody, they, they asked me yesterday, are you staying? I said, nope, nope, uh, I'm not staying today. Oh, we have one. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm coming back to the office today. Um, but for the most part, um, they're made locally in our commissary um, with a company here in town. They deliver them every single morning, um, and they're really good. I mean, they're not bad. You can't beat them. Nah. They're great. Nah. Well, it's great information. Thank you for coming on, Craig. I appreciate hey, it. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Until next time, enjoy life. You've earned it.